Oregon just did that. Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for a reaction episode of Locked On Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view post Oregon dancing viewing. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, and review, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment no more. New customers, join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All basketball, because holy smokes, I, I can I, I can believe it. And I can't believe it. I'll start with that. We'll get to in Folly Dante. I have many a thoughts there. And any of you want to keep questioning Dana Altman? I don't. I'm not not I'm not in that camp. I, I I said for many weeks on the show I was reserving full judgment until the season came to a close and we saw how it played out. But that even though it felt like Oregon wasn't going to make the NCAA tournament, I was leaning towards wanting to stick with Dana Altman. Yeah, I'll explain that in full later, though I don't know that it needs a lot of explanation because that may have been the best coaching job Dana Altman has ever done. Okay, the the Ducks have no business being in the NCAA tournament. They, re- they, they really don't, okay? not as It's not as if they aren't a capable team or that they aren't necessarily talented enough. But teams, especially Dana Altman teams, have historically played their best basketball at the end of the year. And a lot of teams are like that. And so when you have a team that looks different on a weekly basis starting from November, Dante plays the first game, he misses two months. Biddle comes back, and then he's out. Zarzuela was in there for about an hour. Bartholomew hurts his ankle, Mookie Cook came back, and then he was done. It's insane that this team was able to win these three games. Now, should they have beaten UCLA? Yeah, UCLA is not very good. But to beat Arizona and Colorado, those are two tournament caliber teams. Arizona is going to be probably a number two seed in the NCAA tournament. Colorado should be in. I I would hate to see the Buffs miss it. They just had a 24-win season. Colorado should absolutely be in the NCAA tournament. But Oregon is. There are no ifs, ands, buts, doubts, questions, bubble watch, or anything of the sort. And for the Ducks to be in this spot is just remarkable. I, I mean... Just, it's it's absolutely remarkable that Oregon was able to pull this off. I'll be honest, I I did not have a lot of hope. Did I know there was a possibility? Yeah, of course. It's Dana Altman in March, and guess what? The man aligns Rubik's Cube. Shout out to Joey Mack, by the way, on the radio call. As the final seconds ticked off the clock, he said, that Rubik's Cube is green and yellow tonight. Fantastic call, because his name is Dana Altman. And he aligns Rubik's Cubes. I'm not even going to talk about what Oregon could do in the NCAA tournament on this show. Because guess what? It doesn't matter right now. Oregon fans have been through the ringer a bit, particularly with championship games in Las Vegas over the last couple months. And this is just a great feeling. Because Oregon's got a chance. And once you get there, anything could happen. And everything that Oregon fans who follow this basketball team, as I have throughout the year, went through, it all got paid off in that moment. Because... The, the disappointment of losing at UCLA, of losing at Cal, not beating Washington State, Arizona, or Colorado at home over the course of conference play, those were all just major letdowns. Ma- major letdowns. And it was deflating because this team would show a lot of potential. They would show promise. They would show glimpses, but they couldn't quite hit their ceiling. Well, they hit their ceiling at the right time, and they played three outstanding 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 games of basketball and I think the biggest thing that really shifted for the Ducks is that they have found their groove at the defensive end of the floor when you look at Dana Altman teams historically they have been very good at that end and I think because of the ever-changing lineups it was hard for this team to have continuity chemistry and I think that's really important for a Dana Altman defense because they play a lot of matchup zone and that takes a lot of continuity and chemistry and communication and that really shone through in the last three games. UCLA, Oregon's won four straight games now going into the tournament. 
you can't be hotter than that. Well, you could, I guess, technically speaking, but Oregon having won four straight games and allowing under 70 points in all of them, including under 60 against Arizona, that, that game in and of itself is emblematic of how much better and more dangerous this team is right now than they were just a couple of weeks or months ago. Arizona in the two games that Oregon played against them in the regular season put up 103 points in Tucson and back in Eugene put up 87. Let's do some simple math and realize that's 95 points per game. That is a hilariously bad and high number at that end of the floor. And then they come around in the tournament and give up a 59 spot and they hold a potent Colorado offense to under 70. I mean, outstanding, just outstanding. But I, I am just so happy. Yeah, yes, for, for for the fans to you know get to experience this stuff, but and Folly Dante. I'm gonna talk even more about him later. And Jermaine Kuznard, these guys came back for this. This is what they wanted to accomplish. This is what they wanted to do. And it wasn't easy. It was hard fought. And you had some close games like against Utah to end the regular season. I think looking back on it, the momentum of that open look from the corner for the Utes that would have been, you know, for the win, not going down and giving the Ducks a victory there, carrying that momentum into the Pac-12 tournament. I, I can't say that that played a small role in the Ducks putting these three wins together. Three wins in three days for a team that is banged up and playing you know eight it's down to eight scholarship guys and you know i think they've got the rotations pretty solidly figured out but they didn't even shoot the ball well in this game but but i just dante has been through the ringer in his career man and he plays hard he plays with passion and and joy he's an easy guy to root for and he and kuznard both you know kuznard got emotional in the post game interview talking about it because he said, you know, he, he's dreamed of this moment his whole life, just having the opportunity. And Oregon is going to have an opportunity. We'll see where they fall on Selection Sunday and how it all goes down. But, I mean, those guys who, who went through la- the disappointment of last season, not making the tournament, and, and went through what was largely an even more frustrating but equally disappointing season this year. All the games where they came up just a little bit short. They had the opportunity They were good enough to make an at-large NCAA tournament resume, and they were just a couple games short. And then when their backs were up against the wall, they played their absolute best basketball. And it has all changed at the defensive end of the floor. And, I mean, Dante is just – I have so many thoughts on on Enfali Dante. But, you know, Oregon did not shoot the ball well in this game, and they found a way to win. That's a Dana Altman team. That's the Dane Altman team that we've been waiting to see. And, you know, I think we've seen glimpses of it throughout the course of this year, but all the ups and downs, it's all gone by the wayside because Oregon's going to the big dance. And you know what? That's all you can ask for is a chance. I have seen teams with more long shot odds make deep runs in the NCAA tournament before than Oregon. They could lose their first game. And you know what? Yeah, I, 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 of course, want Oregon to win as many games as, as they can, get to the final four. Like, dude, it's March, right? Anything could happen in March. But just the fact that they've gotten here, for me emotionally, as an Oregon fan, I will be able to watch this tournament with an element of kind of house money and just say, you know, the, the fact that they have put themselves in this position is so outstanding. I mean, those guys have worked and fought and scrapped and clawed and they didn't always play their best and it wasn't always going their way and they didn't always get the calls here and there. But boy, oh boy, did they come through when it mattered most. And no one, no one can say that. Can we say that more about than in Folly Dante? Many, many thoughts there. Have you checked out Robinhood yet? You should. Did you know even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. 
Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. This episode also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games, to highlights to in-depth analysis fire tv offers amazing viewing experiences with smart tvs as well as the fire tv stick that you can plug into your existing tv that provides access to millions of movies and tv episodes as well as free and live tv whether opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament which oregon is a part of you're going to want to have a fire tv fire tv recently recently created fire tv channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and more. Plus, they've got news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. That's www.Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. You can't play better than Enfali Dante did for a big man in this game. 25 points, 9 rebounds, 3 steals, the game ceiling block made his only free throw attempt 12 of 12 from the field. The first time Oregon played Colorado in Boulder, that place is a house of horrors for the Ducks. Colorado is a team that has given Dana Altman fits, and yet got it done. Each of the last two wins, Oregon against these teams. I pointed this out going into the run and why I wasn't feeling amazingly optimistic. Oregon was 1-1 and in the regular season against UCLA, 0-2 with a couple of double-digit losses to Arizona, and 0-2 against Colorado. And they beat those teams. <laughs> Just incredible, incredible stuff from Dana Altman and company. And then Folly Dante has been at the top of Coach Altman's mind all the time in press conferences, talking about the team and what they need to do to win and everything like that. And a while ago here on the show, I talked about, you know, when Enfali Dante came back, why the record with Dante in the lineup when he's such a good player, first team all Pac-12 once again, was actually worse than when he was out of it. Now, the schedule and the caliber of opponents was a part of it. But my observation and what I think the coaching staff has done a brilliant job of, maybe they listen to the show, you never know, is the way that Enfali Dante was used offensively was limiting the Ducks' capabilities at that end of the floor. Because far too often... The play was just kind of a simple post-up for Dante. And in the last several weeks, particularly in this tournament, I think Oregon has been much more consistent and effective running action to either get Dante on the move to post him up down low every now and then, but also utilizing him far more in the pick and roll game. I think that has been just a, a godsend for Oregon's offense. And something that I and many of you as well were watching going, why is this not a part of what Oregon does at the offensive end of the floor? But over the last several weeks, it has been. And and Folly Dante is not someone who shoots the ball outside the painted area. I think he's got one jump shot in this entire Pac-12 tournament. And over the last several weeks, he's hitting 85% of his shots. Beat that, Bo Nix. Um <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of it. I think in the Pac-12 tournament, Dante's field goal percentage was like 77.5%. And my first thought was, wow, that's Bo's completion percentage or pretty close to it. I remember watching and having that all get tracked during the uh, Fiesta Bowl win against Liberty. But Dante has you know, become the centerpiece of this Oregon offense, but in a complimentary way. So yes, there are specific post-ups that I'm not opposed to. I'm opposed to forcing the ball down to him, which is what Oregon did a lot this year. And they would kind of stand around the perimeter, wait for him to make a play. But using him in the pick and roll action, I think has opened him up to utilize his athleticism. They throw more lobs to him than they did early in the year. And maybe it's because he's healthier. I mean, that that might be a part of it. He's more conditioned and he's you know got the leaping ability and... He's just so impossible to stop down there. But th there are three ways that a post guy can get his points. Number one, in the pick and roll. Number two, straight post up. Number three, offensive rebounds and putbacks. I thought for the first 
kind of half of Dante's, you know, being healthy and on the court for the Ducks. They were trying too hard to make it the straight post-ups. And I think the incorporation of, you know, giving him different looks, moving him around on the floor has done wonders for Oregon and it's done wonders for Dante. And the numbers, I mean, he's most outstanding player in the Pac-12 tournament and deservedly so. He he was I mean, just just amazing this guy. 25 and 9 on 12 of 12 shooting. The game before against Arizona, he had 14 points, 10 boards and four rejections and he hit 71% of his shots uh, in that game and he had 22 with six rebounds and a couple of steals in the first game against UCLA. Like he he's just been absolutely dynamic in the way that they have employed him and again you got to credit the coaching staff here because I think that that was holding them back. And I think that that has just been such a welcome change. And I think it's made life easier for Jermaine Kuznard and Jackson Shellstad as well, who, by the way, kind of shot the ball like crap in this game. They were combined nine for 30 from the field and one of nine from beyond the arc. So it's not like Oregon was hitting a whole heck of a lot of shots, which I'll get to in just a sec. But those two guys, Shellstad's mid-range, lethal lethal in the mid-range. Kuznard's float game comes and goes, but he can get a lot of good shots getting downhill. And I think with Dante in the pick and roll game, I mean, he and Kuznard have got a really nice two-man action there. I, I think that's all just been so much better in the last several weeks. And oftentimes, Oregon has shot better or just been more productive offensively because of it. They get a lot more quality looks. I feel, I feel like over the first half of the year, a lot of games where Oregon's offense would get stagnant and they would take bad shots. I don't feel like they're taking a lot of bad shots recently because of the way that they, they just, you know, consistently run their sets and get the sort of looks they want and get downhill to the bucket. But amazing stat about this game. Oregon was 2 of 17 from beyond the arc. They were minus 15 on the perimeter. That's craziness to win a game when your opponent hits five more threes than you. Last year, that was a death nail for the Ducks. You get you you lose the three point battle, you lose the game. That was a consistent theme throughout the year. Oregon goes two for seventeen. The Ducks did not hit a single three point field goal in the second half. Not a single one. Dante's efficiency is off the charts. You literally can't be better than twelve for twelve from the field. And a couple of those were post ups, but not too many. He had a nice lob from Kuznard. He got the ball off the pick and roll a couple other times. And then on the offensive boards, and this is where I think, you know, having him as the pick and roll guy is so much better than just a straight post touch. When Kuznard gets downhill, if the big man comes over to contest the shot because he seals his man off really well, because Kuznard is really, really physical and hard to, you know, get through as a defender who's been screened. When Kuznard gets into the lane and misses a shot, Dante's just there to clean it up. And that that's giving yourselves two looks at a shot within five feet of the bucket. And that's just been a really, really good formula for Oregon to score. But if you told me before the game, Oregon goes two for 17 from beyond the arc and Shellstad and Kuznard are one for nine, I, I, I'd say, I don't think they're winning the game. I tweeted out before the game, I thought the biggest key for Oregon was Kuznard hitting threes. And Kuznard did not hit his threes. And guess what? Oregon found a way to win the game. And, and that way was in folly, Dante. That, that guy... Man, I think Oregon fans already really liked him, but somehow I think we all collectively like him even more. The The way that they just rally around him and feed off of him and the way he impacts the game at both ends of the floor, he's such a good rebounder. Oh my gosh, the boards that he comes down with, that's where he's always been at his best. But the, the incorporation of the offensive sets, as I talked about, I think have just been fantastic. But the energy, the passion, the joy that he plays with, he's battling through a sore lower back after he took that fall against Arizona. I mean, holy smokes. And by the way, on the subject of Oregon big men, quick shout out to Mo Diawara. Only played nine minutes in this game. Only had two rebounds. He had a couple of sequences in which he kept Colorado off the boards. He should have had credit for a block. I don't know why he doesn't in the stat sheet. I guess they said it was just a ball that was jarred free. I don't know. But pretty sure he had a block shot. But... You know, Oregon didn't get a ton from their bench in this game, just seven points from Rigsby and, and Aquendo. But I, I, I just cannot say enough about the way this team has changed defensively. It has been so dramatic. And if they keep holding teams under 70 points, 
that's been a formula for Dana Altman teams to get wins. And we'll, we'll see who they match up with in the NCAA tournament. And we'll dive into all that. And I'm, st- I'm, I'm stoked to have that sort of matchup. Since I've been hosting this show, Oregon hasn't made the NCAA tournament. So uh, real, really, really excited to dive into all that sort of stuff. Uh, any questions, thoughts, comments, drop them in the YouTube comments below or hit me up on X, formerly known as Twitter, at S. McLaughlin CFB or at Locked on Ducks. Remember when Dana Altman was thinking about retiring but then wasn't had to an- yeah, I have many thoughts there. I have a thought about Nissan too. You should check them out. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars are the Nissan Armada. They lost in their championship game badly, by the way, to Iowa State, but this top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. The Tennessee Vols are the pathfinder. They're thrilling to watch and really have created a lane for themselves, getting the top spot in the SEC. And Dalton Connect, Player of the Year candidate, has carried the Vols all season and made them a team to watch in March. And Oregon has to be this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us with a powerful performance against Colorado in the Pac-12 title game, Arizona before that, giving them their first Pac-12 tournament championship since Peyton Pritchard led the way. There's just something about those West Lynn point guards. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Go shop at NissanUSA.com. So remember that time in which some Oregon fans would voice their frustration in a public forum, call it X, formerly known as Twitter, or YouTube comments, or message boards. Dana Altman wasn't exactly a popular figure, and he was asked about rumors that he was pondering retirement. Well, can we put that to bed? I think so, because this guy can still coach. Oregon has missed more games by rotation players than anyone in college basketball. It's not particularly close. And the Ducks are going to the NCAA tournament. And I don't think anybody would like to play them right now. If Oregon hits their threes, they're as dangerous as anybody that you're going to find. I mean, they just beat Arizona. And Arizona is going to be a top two seed and, you know, a semi-trendy national title pick. I don't, I don't know that they've got the horses to go that far, but certainly... They're going to be in that conversation. Oregon just showed, yeah, yeah, they can beat a team like that. So if you can beat a top two seed, guess what? You can beat anybody. Question is, can you do it over and over and over again? And I think for Dana Altman, this is putting to bed any concerns, questions, doubts, anything of the sort, because not only would moving on from Dana Altman have been a massive reset and led to probably a difficult next year because you can't guarantee that Shellstad Evans or anybody else would would stick around who has eligibility to return, but you you also would be bringing in a coach that well I, I mean I I think I don't know who they would have brought in but I think he can win you know we'll see if he can but we know that Dana Altman can we we've seen him do it before and. You know, I talked about on this show the the passion that he displays, the energy, the honest, oftentimes frustration with his team. I mean, the Colorado game, for instance. You know what he was ticked off about in the post-game presser? First thing he was asked about, Coach, what would you see the struggle? Oh, my gosh. It drove him nuts. It still does. You know why? Because he's still got the fire. He's still got that that edge to him of, I want to be here. I want to win win games. I want to keep coaching, and I'm still capable. And any questions about his capabilities to lead the Oregon men's basketball program, got to be put to bed right here, right now, done. If he wants to stay, he can stay. His contract runs through, I think, the 2027, 8, not like late 2020s to maybe early 2030. I'd have to double check, but he can be at Oregon for a while. And as far as I'm concerned... I came into this year saying he's got to make the tournament or we need to have a conversation. And then as the year played out, I went, I think he's been dealt a tough hand with the injuries here. And now he's made the tournament. And that's just reinforcing my belief of, yeah, okay, Dana Allman can stay. Dana Dana Allman can stay as long as he likes. I was heavily leaning, though had not fully declared on the show that I, I was 
wanting Dane Altman to return. I think this is putting any sort of doubts that I have or that anybody else has to the side, to the back burner, because this guy can still clearly coach. I mean, that Colorado team is good. That Arizona team is very good. And the fact that Oregon was 0-4 against those teams in the regular season and then came back when they needed it most and, and put up masterful defensive performances and just completely shifted the, the tone and tenor of the games compared to the regular season matchups, that's coaching. That, 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 that's coaching. This was just a coaching masterpiece by Dana Altman, start to finish. And I think it mostly came with the defensive end. I talked about the offensive improvements that, that I've noticed over the last couple of weeks. And, it, you know, Oregon, well, you know, when the offseason arrives, we'll get to what sort of moves and changes they need to make and roster improvements and everything like that. But I, I think that this team, th this, is, this is the most you can get out of them, right? Now you go into the big dance, see what kind of matchup you get. If, if, if you get a good match, yeah, you can win a couple games. Fun fact, the last two times that Oregon needed to win the Pac-12 tournament to make the NCAA tournament, they went to the Sweet 16. Most recently, in the 2019 year, with Peyton Pritchard, Kenny Wooten, Lou King, and uh, those guys that you know were pretty pretty darn solid squad, they lost to the eventual national champion, Virginia, and they played them tight. They, they played them tight. So, yeah, if, if Dante is playing at this level, if Shellstad and Kuznard can hit their threes, especially Kuznard, like in the NCAA tournament, you know, o Oregon, I think, kind of got away with one here, beating Colorado and hitting two threes, not hitting any threes in the second half. I don't know how often, if at all, you can get away with that in the NCAA tournament. Great that it happened to Oregon here against a tournament caliber team in Colorado for sure. That's not a repeatable formula. And Oregon, I think, was getting good looks. They're just not hitting shots. <laughs> like they're just, they're just not hitting shots right now from beyond the arc. But still found a way to put up 75 points, 24 free throw attempts. That's a great number. One day Oregon will be a great free Oregon will be a great free throw shooting team, and they'll just you know win the national championship. But uh, right now, defensively, the team's dialed in, and that's that's Dana Altman. That's when I think great Dana Altman teams, individual performers stand out on offense. And then you've got a great defensive unit with a, a big presence in the middle. Jordan Bell, Kenny Wooten, Chris Boucher. I mean, go all the way back as far as you want. I, I think the best Dana Altman teams have, you know, had that guy, Dante, of course, that, that, that's been able to, to affect the game. I think you go back to the last time Oregon was in the NCAA tournament. I think if Dante had been able to, to be healthy for that, I'm pretty sure he was not and wasn't able to play. It's part of the reason he wanted to come back for a fifth year. Wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. Now he gets to. It, it's awesome. It's feel good. It's just really, really quality stuff fr from the Ducks here. But uh, I, I think this Oregon team, if they hit threes, yeah, they can be dangerous. They, they, they just showed that. But Mostly they're dangerous because they got a guy at head coach that he knows what he's doing. I don't think he's going to get another question. Not that it wasn't you know fair to ask about a rumor or anything like that. He's an older guy, but I don't think there are going to be any other questions about whether or not Dana Altman's retiring. There shouldn't be, and there should be no doubt in anyone's mind. Even if Oregon loses their first round game, this is an incredible accomplishment given the season that they have had both culturally and schematically. This, this is a miraculous coaching feat. One of the best jobs Dana Altman's ever done. So no, he is nowhere close to being on a hot seat anymore. You could have had that discussion if they'd missed if they'd missed the tournament here, but I wouldn't have been in that particular camp. It just would have had more legitimacy to it. Now it's got none. If you're someone who says Altman needs to go, nope, you got, nope, like, that, that that discussion at this point in time, you cannot talk about Dana Altman and the hot seat until next season comes to a close, and that year is an absolute disaster. That's the only way, because right now this guy is locked in, and he's still a really good coach. He knows how to motivate his players, get the most out of his team. He's a leader uh, of these kids, and man, this is just a heck of a job. Full stop. What a night. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day and go Ducks.